Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Laura, happy solstice. We're coming out of the solstice portal. So let's get a starseed card. I wanna see what the energy is for this check-in. It could be any number of things because there's so much happening. So we have to kind of narrow down whatever Pleiadians want to speak about today. And it also feels like what's happening is the confines of the dimensions are collapsing all around us. And the feeling of one reality is the only reality that exists is leaving our consciousness very rapidly fast because we're accelerating and evolving back to our multidimensional selves in a very rapid, fast way. And so everything's happening. It's kind of like stop holding to any foundations that you feel like you have built for yourself because they're going to collapse and crumble all around you. And that could be your life story. That could be your traumas. That could be whatever you're holding to that's making you feel like it's who you are and that's defining you. That's all going away because we have to kind of do a reset into our most ethereal selves so we can start to be living in higher vibrational crystalline energy and not living in this dense heavy trauma, karma, energy, trust the timing is here um, because it's time. Time is not running out, it says. Trust the wave you came in on. And I always talk about the 144,000 as a wave and that we are shifting everything around us as a wave. And so divine feminines are a wave. Divine masculines are a wave. And divine feminines and divine masculines, twin flames, 144,000, we operate as 72,000 of us are divine feminines, 72,000 of us are divine masculines, and those are the waves where we are telepathically altering the very fabric of our existence and reality because we are the way showers. Okay, Star Brothers, Horus Energy, and this is, again, Horus wants to come on because he's always here. He's always here blasting us forward in some way. And the eagle energy is seeing what's coming, having precognitions. The seas of Mintaka are also here. It's the feeling of the unconscious coming up to the surface, coming up to our conscious awareness. So whatever you feel like you've buried, whatever it feels like you aren't speaking about, what is dwelling in your subconscious and your shadows and all of that, and that's on a personal level as well as on a very big universal level. All of the shadows are coming to light. All of the dark energy that can no longer live on this earth is going to be revealed and exposed. And okay, bringing unconsciousness to light, seeing what's coming. So we're seeing what's about to be revealed. Trust the timing. It feels like the weight of the world is here. All of this feels to me like the empaths have been carrying the heaviest load of humanity's deep slumber, deep unconsciousness here. And a lot of us starseeds are empaths, twin flames, we're empaths. And you're gonna to attract to you, prior to being fully awakened, you're gonna to attract to you a lot of people who need saving and a lot of people who are taking advantage of you. Boundaries, let it go, it's not yours to carry. Anyone that is weighing you down here, that is keeping you in the water in this type of way that it's an unconscious water. If they're keeping you buried in your uh, depth of feeling that is low vibrational, meaning they're keeping you in fear, they're keeping you in anger, they're keeping you in grief, they're keeping you in anything that's very dense and heavy and weighing you down like an anchor to the old timeline has to be released, trust the timing. Because Horus is here, especially for divine masculine energy, to attempt to unhook you, to attempt to get you to rise up beyond the surface. I'm seeing someone actually, like the mermaids, come out from the depths and transform into humans on legs and start to walk on through the land and then transform into an eagle with wings and start to fly and have a very light, um, like phoenix rising from the ashes feeling here, that that's what wants to happen for our wave, for all of us. And so it does seem like divine feminine energy has been much lighter in our vessel, rising above the um, 
dense, heavy, crumbling, traumatizing matrix. Divine masculines have been hooked and anchored. And it's like you're hooked and anchored to the old crumbling timeline. It's like someone I'm seeing uh, in Titanic where they had to hold and cling to the ship to the very last second. And then they finally, you know, um, it sank. So they had to, they, they had to, um, uh, whatever. But the point is, it's like that feeling for Divine Masculine that they are holding and clinging to the sinking ship until the very last second. And so Divine Feminine has been up here flying and circling and kind of looking and observing Divine Masculine, hoping they're not going to go down with the ship of the sinking, crumbling matrix. And we're getting down to trust the timing to the very last second where, you know, you've got to start to float on the top of the water here and save yourself and fly above it. Okay. Let's just clarify this energy. Yeah. It takes a lot for you on the awakened timeline. It takes a lot for us who are ascending to get used to feeling in a high vibration because it's the comfort zone of the matrix to keep you in your dense, heavy energy and to keep you in your loops of trauma and your loops of feeling um, trapped, feeling hopeless, and addictions I'm also hearing. Anything that's addiction, anything that is um, using your energy that's, that's not in alignment with the higher timeline. Okay, it takes a lot to get used to living differently. Okay, and there's a lot here that's affecting our chakras, the third chakra and the first chakra. So, okay, the unconscious energy is affecting your solar plexus. So it's going to feel like you're going to feel off. You're going to look into, you're going to feel into someone else's energy around you and it's not going to feel right. This is for masculine or feminine. This feels like it's a general message today. Okay. Because it feels like you're listening to your gut instinct, your gut response to something here. And it's only a feeling, but the feeling is your power is not where it should be. You don't feel like this person or this energy is empowering you. You know, it's your relationship that's not empowering you. It's your job that's not empowering you. But it's a feeling, and if you were to say anything about it or you were to try to put it into words, people would look at you funny and people would think, there's nothing wrong. You're living your best life. What are you talking about, man holding a coin? It's a feeling of someone who has it all, has a high status, is successful in some type of way, but you don't feel right in your gut. Your gut knows you're not in alignment because there's a feeling of you're tied up to something that's not allowing the energy to open your upper chakras. It's not allowing you to fly. Horus is trying to get you to fly and something is tying you up here. Let's get some tarot on this. Okay. And we all have divine masculine energy within us. So just take this how it resonates for you. It just feels like it's the divine masculine energy that wants to build, that wants to create with passion and purpose, that wants to be released on this earth fully. And um, Archangel Michael here, there's a lot of cord cutting energy here. Archangel Michael is trying to cut the cord that is um, taking advantage of your empath good nature. Someone, someone or something that continues to take advantage of you, uh, keeping you not able to soar and fly and create with passion and purpose. Because there has been a very strong agenda to keep divine masculine energy suppressed because of how powerful divine masculine energy is and how magical divine masculine energy is once it's unleashed and once it can be freed to flourish on this earth. Okay, tell me about this all tied up. What's tying up the masculines? Two of pentacles. You're in between timelines. You're in between the fifth dimension and the third dimension. And it's like someone who cannot fully let go of this heavy energy. Okay, we know that. It's like King of Swords is a feeling. 
of you feeling like I actually get as divine masculine purposely not feeling like they're ready to reveal themselves because you're not sure the tower how uh, you will be received once you fully unleash your magical gifts here. And so it's like the divine masculine is keeping themselves stuck and keeping yourself tied because you are attempting to control the timeline. And so if divine masculine is trying to attempt to control the timeline, a tower is going to occur because you're trying to play God. And it's like, you are a God, but you are also um, meant to be guided by higher beings. And you don't just know everything yourself. And I feel like there's a sense of divine masculine fighting their ego in some way and attempting to do everything yourself on your own timing instead of allowing the energy to move you into a new reality, okay? Where you're gonna actually have more ability to be your, your magical self, Queen of Cups is here, Nine of Pentacles. Divine Feminine Energy, really strong here, is attempting to get the masculine to come down off of this mountain. Okay, it feels like divine feminine energy is um, an energy of pure unconditional love here. And it's a sense of divine feminine and a constant rebirth cycle, the nine of pentacles, and a constant energy of freedom as well. And divine masculine is over here looking at the feminine, feeling like maybe the reality that you live in isn't practical or something because this is a very practical minded king and a very logical thinking king. And it's kind of like Divine Masculine has put a boundary to the wrong energy. You're putting a boundary to your Divine Feminine when actually the boundary needs to go towards what's keeping you hooked and tied, that it feels like you're trying to, um, it seems like you're trying to stay stuck in a timeline where the timeline is ejecting you out of it. And, um, for whatever reason, you're saying you're not ready. Okay, strength is here and the emperor. It's it's kind of like fighting with yourself. That's what I get. It feels like divine masculine energy is fighting with yourself and instead of allowing things to unfold and let it, allowing yourself to be moved by what you're feeling instead of going up to your head and trying to logically maneuver because we've let go of the timeline of maneuvering with logic. You have to go fully on your feelings here. And it's a total different operating system than what we're used to. So if you feel moved to do something, you would uh, act on that rather than trying to go up into your head and figure out, well, I don't know if I could do that. I'm not sure if it's the right time or something. If your gut is saying, don't go to this person, they're taking your energy and don't go to this thing. It's, it's not in alignment with your higher self. Don't go and don't do that, that thing on yourself 333 three, three, because your higher timeline, your higher path wants to unfold. The Crow and the Beloved. Your intuition is actually screaming here with the King of Swords um, towards the Beloved is the only kind of love card in this deck <laughs> that exists. And if you're getting the Beloved and the Queen of Cups here, you're getting a strong energy of love that is kind of taking over your whole being. And that's the energy of the Divine Feminine because I can speak for myself as a Divine Feminine, um, empowered by love on everything that I do. Uh, everything that I do on my, all my channels, everything is powered by the amount of love that was ignited um, as a twin flame on this journey. And the love has kind of just transcended now into this um, mission and purpose of doing this work every day, but it originally ignited from a twin flame activation and from meeting my counterpart. And so I feel the same energy from Divine Masculine to divine feminine very strong that that amount of love that gets activated that that amount of energy that wants to come through to build and create something 
can build and create entire new worlds. And there's a feeling and a sense here that you know that on some level. And that's the tower that's coming in is this feeling of, I can't feel this amount of love and do anything with it. You actually can and you're meant to. And that's why you get activated on these journeys. And that's why your divine feminine is always going to be sending you love and is always going to be this representation of your ultimate freedom because it's paradoxical that going into a fifth dimension relationship with your counterpart on this level is actually freeing you and it's not confining you like the 3D template relationships did in the old earth. And there's a sense of someone that is trapped in relationship templates that are binding and that have you boxed you in in your uh, thinking. And it's almost this total inability to make sense of how the new earth relationships can be any different. But the love is overpowering you. And it's like, you kind of do know how different it is because the love is the feeling of the divine. It isn't just the love of another person, it's divine love. And so you feel the feeling and presence of much more going on, of the higher realms opening up and of a limitless experience that comes with this particular divine connection. Okay, I just wanna get Oh, an archetype card to wrap up this energy because it feels like this is something where someone's been trying to make logical sense of what's been happening for them physically, of what's been happening for them emotionally. And it's a sense of you're not going to make sense of it logically. You're just going to have to go based on your feeling. You're going to have to make decisions based on your feeling. You're going to have to free yourself and cut yourself loose of things that don't feel in alignment to this level of divine expression and go towards what is fulfilling you on a divine highest level of expression. The orphan. Okay. Which is a bit devastating to see. The natos. Which is death of your uh, inner child that's been traumatized. Death of the version of you that feels like it's been abandoned and rejected and left out in the cold. This is everything that's happened to you that feels like it's been keeping you tied and tethered to the old earth. And when you no longer identify with your sad stories, and I don't mean to sound uh, unfeeling about that, but the sense is that we basically have to live as if we have ended the life that we were in prior to being activated as ascended masters here. So when you no longer feel like that was your life, what you led up until this point of activation with your counterpart or with your, um, with your activation, with your Kundalini activation, whatever it might be that's happened to you, it's like someone has been not wanting to let go fully because it's going to feel like a death. And that's what the Natos is. It's death energy. And it's feeling like you're going to free yourself so much from everything that you're going to basically be able to start over as a lighter version of you without the trauma story and without anything holding you so that you can be free to build and create something new. The flame. Okay. With your twin flame. Agape. It's unconditional love. So that's the power of love. That's the power of twin flames who are activated with unconditional love for each other is that you have the power to reset your entire life story, to reset everything that's ever happened to you and to actually come out the other side bigger and more bold and more strengthened and because you're strengthened by the power of the divine. And it feels like divine feminine has been uh, very much doing this in your everyday life to embody this divine love energy and to let go of your old stories. Okay, and we all know what's coming with the crow because it is activating this event for humanity, this tower moment in this event is when twin flames really start to come together, the real ones that are really activated at this level. And that is the amount of love that's about to be unleashed on this earth. And when that happens, 
Everything that's left that's standing, the old foundations are going to fully crumble. They're going to fully dis dis disassemble, <laughs> dissolve all around us because the eternal flame never blows out. And it's the eternal flame of, um, actually, I'm going to read out of the book because they're telling me to read out of the book for the flame. Okay. So I think this is the second time that we've had this card come through, which is significant. Okay. Yeah, no longer identifying with your wounds and starting to let go of all of that so that you can be ignited onto your divine mission here. Okay. I'm sure it's here somewhere. <laughs> okay. It's a tool. It's under tools. Okay. The fire, the spark, the glimmer. The ancient yogis saw this flame at the center of the abdomen and believed it to be responsible for our vitality, which is interesting because that's in alignment with the third chakra here that's come up. That's your gut feeling. Okay. We, when it is lit, we are connected to our purpose and sense that life is a sacred gift. It is said that those who cannot see the sacred around them have let their inner flame go out. Think of this card as a call to reignite that fire, to cup your hands gently around those things you've forgotten and protect the flame. No matter how harshly the winds around you blow, it could be an inner archetype that begs you to light its wick. It's likely that the poet, the mystic, or the shaman would call to you with the language of the flame because it is the mystical shamanic path that's calling you when you fully give in to this activation. This isn't bubblegum, nonsense spirituality. This is true mystical spirituality. This is true mystical awakening. This is your true mystic power. And that is what wants to be ignited here. It's not a fairy tale bubblegum relationship with your counterpart. It's the key to everything that's mystical and magical on this earth that has been suppressed under the surface and that we are bringing back to light with these connections. Okay. And that's why I have videos on Patreon because they're not meant for everyone because these are mystical activations and they're very sacred journeys and they're not meant for everyone. And so if you are interested in joining the Patreon because... I just am not guided to put everything out on YouTube because we have to keep this journey very sacred because that is the nature of these journeys at this level. Okay. I feel like that's the message today. Um, sending you all much peace and light. Take care, everyone.